I'm pregnant. Oh my. So I guess we're. Hi everybody, welcome back to a brand new video today. So this is actually a video that I really didn't want to do, but I really feel like I need to. I feel like I need to talk about it, I need to let it out, and I feel like it's going to help me just like move on, not forget, not, not ever think about it, not be hurt anymore, but just kind of like move forward, I guess. I said I wasn't gonna cry because I was feeling better. Ugh. Okay, so I did not feel ready to make this video. I did not want to make this video, but I feel like I needed to. And now I'm like, why am I doing this? But I'm too late now. So I had a miscarriage about two weeks ago. So we were so ready to start trying for another baby. Um, and I got off birth control. 10 months ago and actually longer no 10 months ago I got off birth control 10 months ago and I found out I was pregnant eight months later so it took me eight months to even get pregnant and at that point I wanted this baby that baby more than anything else I just really wanted another baby I knew since we had Leo we had them both back to back so I just I knew they were both a lot because they're only 15 months apart but it kind of got to the point where well now it's getting easier you know Benjamin is four Leo is gonna be three in October this year I felt like I was ready and they were getting a lot easier, which is why do you want to start all over? But I just knew I wasn't done. I've always wanted four kids. Um, I was told when I was 22 years old that I have PCOS and that I'll probably never have a baby. And that if I ever do get pregnant, my chances of a miscarriage are like 40% or something like that. Like crazy, right? So... With Benjamin, it took us three years to get pregnant, and nothing ever happened, right? Three years of me doing research on PCOS. There's no cure, but how do you fight it? How do you control it? How do you manage it? I don't want to say I have any of the crazy symptoms that comes with PCOS. Luckily, I don't ovulate. My periods are super irregular. So in three years, I ovulated once. That's how bad it is i guess so if that's the only thing i have i don't have crazy symptoms at all like i never even knew i had pcos i just always had irregular periods since i first got my period when i was a little girl you know so that's the only thing i can think of but we both wanted this baby at this point it's like we're ready why isn't it happening i would take pregnancy tests all the time they were always negative and it was kind of like stressful to just be wanting that and I knew that if I stressed I wasn't gonna get pregnant but how do you not stress right so now that we moved I'm a stay-at-home mom now it's like it's perfect it's almost like part of me felt guilty leaving the two boys to work when I did work and now it's like I want to make it up with this baby which I know it's makes no sense but it was kind of like now I can be home be with this baby all the time like just do all the mom things see everything I missed out with the boys with this new baby and then I'm not getting pregnant you know so it was really stressful and then finally we're pregnant so like I said I was taking tests all the time right so July 3rd you know my in-laws came over and she was like Oh my gosh are you pregnant and I'm like no I'm just maybe gaining weight like what do you mean she's like no I like something about you and you know the boys they're just like all over you they're so loving I'm like, yeah they have been really loving they have been like really just trying to be with me all the time which maybe but no I was like I'm not pregnant you know and then I realized I had kind of like forgotten about it like not really trying and I realized that it was July 3rd 
and my last period was end of May. So I missed my period in June, but I never really realized it because I had kind of just been like, I'm done trying. It just, it is what it is, whatever, you know? So, but I still really wanted it. So July 3rd came and I'm like, okay, maybe I should take a test. And she kept telling me, just take a test, you know, just take a test. So I took a test, it was negative. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'm done, you know, it is what it is. Just my period's late again, that's super normal for me, it's super irregular. So then I took another test July 5th, just because the boys were like super loving, just different, like they just wanted to cuddle me all the time and hug me and just so loving and something just told me like, I am, I don't know, I, I am pregnant. So come July 5th, we found out, yes, you know, we took a test, a home test, and it was like a positive, but it was one really dark line and one really light light. So I was like, okay, you know, the line is kind of light, but it's, it's a positive, right? And obviously I was over the moon, I got super excited, you know, Jorge was really excited, he was actually more excited than I expected him to be. He was okay with having another baby, but ideally he would just prefer things stay the way they are, just because he loved that the boys were growing up and we were able to have more quality time. You know, we, we were able to spend more time together. And if we had another baby, it was like starting all over. You know, we just wouldn't be able to have as much free time as we do now, even though still not a lot but it was a lot more it was kind of like we got over the potty training so now it's like that just made it so much easier no more diapers no more potty training all those things like the boys became pretty independent they just dress themselves now if i just give them their clothes they go to the bathroom on their own i just make them food and then they eat it by themselves like all those little things are like literally milestones that make a huge difference so then we found out we were pregnant and we were, he was really excited, which I didn't expect him to be as excited as he was, like I said. And then I didn't have a doctor here yet. I didn't know any OBs or anything. I just moved here. Like I didn't know anybody here yet. So I just started doing some research and joined like this Oklahoma group on Facebook and just asked, you know, best OBs in town. I found one that was like the best for C-sections. That's what they said. So I was like, okay, let me call, you know. Called, made an appointment, and according to the appointment, didn't have anything sooner. So when I went in, they're like, okay, you should be about nine weeks. Nine or ten weeks. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going to see a heartbeat, right? So they do like the vaginal ultrasound and there's no heartbeat. Immediately, I'm like, that is not right. That has never happened to me. Both boys, we always had a heartbeat. Like, what's going on? So she said, you know, maybe because of your PCOS, you're just a little early. So I said, okay, it could be. You know, I could have just ovulated like way later. Like, that's super normal for me. Okay. So then they go ahead and just send me straight to get my blood work done. HCG levels were measuring about three to five weeks. And then I went in two weeks later, I mean, so I'm sorry, not two weeks, two days, and my levels were supposed to double, and they didn't, but they still went up. So she said, well, that's, you know, it's still going up, it's just, it's not doubling. It went from 4,000 to 6,000, should have gone to 8,000, right? So that was a little weird, which... It could have still been normal because I was super early, right? So then they scheduled me again for August 9th, right? And I'm like, okay, so we had our vacation already planned. You know, July 31st, we flew to Florida. And it was already booked. Like, everything was already done. I didn't know I was going to be pregnant in July. I'm sorry, in like beginning of August. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh, should I still go? Like, I don't want to like not go anymore. Like, we can't cancel everything and lose all the money. Like, it's just, I was worried about it. I don't know why, even though 
I found out super early, so I immediately stopped, you know, drinking wine. I stopped eating things you can't as a pregnant woman, doing things you shouldn't, like just everything. I, I knew I was pregnant really early, so I stopped everything. I needed to stop. I didn't work out. I was actually working out pretty, pretty crazy just because we were going to go to Florida and I just wanted to look amazing and I just wanted to feel good and I bought my clothes kind of tight so that they would fit me for that time and nothing fit me by the time I got there because I got super bloated I felt super pregnant I was just falling asleep all the time which I had never had that happen before I was always tired I was really nauseous in the mornings but nothing too crazy my boobs were super sore started getting really bloated really early which i'm like i'm only like six weeks at this point i could already feel pregnant like my stomach started getting really hard i had the little pooch already like it was bad so in my head i'm thinking oh i'm just probably gonna gain a lot of weight this pregnancy but it's okay because it might be my last pregnancy you know you never know with my problems i might never get pregnant again after this so i think that every single pregnancy and this was the third one already so we go on our vacation took care of myself was super cautious with everything come back august 9th at this point i should be eight weeks pregnant or nine right according to my hcg levels i was like 11 or 12 weeks I'm sorry, according to my last period, I was 11 and 12 weeks. According to my HCG levels, at this point, it was like 22,000. I was about um, eight to nine weeks, so there should for sure be a heartbeat, right? So I go in. Oh, it's like I'm reliving it, and I hear the worst news ever. There's no heartbeat, and I'm like, There's, there needs to be one, you know? It's eight to nine weeks now, like... This is not normal anymore. And before I was super positive thinking it's just too early. Which it's normal. It's okay. It's still really, really early. So then after she says that to me, I'm like, okay. I immediately start bawling. And he just keeps looking to see if there's anything. He says he sees signs of blood clots in me. So he's like, it looks like it's the, he said it's the beginning of a miscarriage. It's what it looks like. And I'm like, okay. And actually Jorge was in there with me. I didn't record it because deep down I felt like I was going to get bad news. And I didn't want to ever talk about this. I didn't want to ever make a video about this. But it was really nice of him to be there with me. He was able to leave work. And we were kind of able to hear the news together. We both immediately just looked at each other and started crying. And the doctor was really good. He was just like, you know, it's okay. It's not your fault. And I immediately started thinking, what did I do wrong? Should I have not done something? And I just kept thinking, like, what did I do wrong? Like, why did this happen? And the worst thing about a miscarriage is, like, you don't know why it happened. Like, there's no reason why. A lot of things could have gone wrong. A lot of things that I couldn't control and the fact that I don't know why and the fact that I couldn't control it, it's something I can't control, is what has killed me. It's only been two weeks, but it still hurts a lot, I still think about it. I immediately started, you know, going on Pinterest and made a board, baby number three, and started saving a lot of pictures on Instagram, baby number three. And I got super excited. I told a lot of people. I told a lot of family, friends, because I didn't think anything would go wrong. I'm like, I already have two healthy boys. I already have two healthy pregnancies. I've never had a miscarriage. It's not going to happen to me. And I started reading so much about it when I was just depressed. I would just sit in bed, depressed. And I started reading a lot, and this is something that's really common. Like, one in four women go through this. 
and I never thought this would happen to me. But this could happen to anyone. It really can and it's something that you just don't know why it happened. So August 9th was Monday, you know. The next day he the doctor wanted me to go in and get a ultrasound to check if there was a baby like anywhere else that it shouldn't be maybe an ectopic pregnancy or just to see if they could even find anything anywhere and I went in nothing so no baby no heartbeat which to me at that point was kind of good news I didn't want to have a baby in my fallopian tubes because that's just crazy um crazy pain crazy things that could go wrong if that was to ever happen to me and I didn't want to have an ectopic pregnancy I didn't want to have to go through that so I was relieved that it wasn't the case that was on a Wednesday and then um, I went in they did another HCG level and then on I went in on Wednesday did it again on Friday we got the results and I kept thinking as long as the HCG levels don't drop, there's still a chance. Yes, maybe there's no heartbeat yet, but it could still just be early. Maybe I'm even earlier than 8 to 9 weeks. I was just so positive the whole time. Maybe it's just still super early. As long as the HCG levels continue to go up, I'm okay. So Friday, I get the results from the lab and I went from 22,000 to 20,000. I immediately started bawling. I'm like, this is it. This is it. It's, it's just, it's, it's, something's wrong. It's just, it's not a healthy baby. It's not a healthy pregnancy. Is there even a baby? I don't know. I don't know if it was maybe just a sack. We, we were never able to know. We were never able to get an answer. They never told us anything. So, Friday, I get those horrible news, immediately call Jorge, and he's like, you know, it's okay, you're healthy, you're okay, the boys and I need you, it's okay, it, it wasn't meant to be, there was, it wasn't a healthy, strong baby, but it was still my baby. I still had something, you know, I was still pregnant at some point. Whenever it was, I was. And now I wasn't anymore. Well, I still was, but I wasn't, you know. So that night, he was like, you want to go out to dinner? Let's have a date night. I really didn't want to go. I really didn't want to do anything. But he really wanted to just have some quality time. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I do need that. But I just wanted to be in my bed crying. I had been crying the whole week. Um, so we went out to dinner. We had a great time. It was really nice. And then the next day, I started getting cramps. I started bleeding. And I just knew it was happening. I had never gone through that. I didn't know what to expect. I had contractions, which was super painful. This was probably like the worst labor I've had you know and I think you know I called the doctor just wanted to make sure how much is okay how much bleeding how many pads should I be filling up is this normal like it was insane like I had never seen something like this I had never experienced something like this so you know he said everything was fine as long as you know I don't feel certain symptoms like dizziness as long as it doesn't smell weird and I think it was like a pad every two hours or something like that and I'm like okay well I'm fine then you know I didn't feel like I wanted to faint I was taking you know Norco for the pain and it wasn't doing much like it was a lot of pain I don't know why and what the doctor told me was you know she was like I think a miscarriage is more painful than labor and this just really stuck by me when she said that she was like when you give birth 
you're dying, you're in pain, and everything hurts, but you have a baby and you forget it. When you have a miscarriage, you go through all that, but there's no baby. You don't get to look at the baby and be like, oh, it's okay though, I forgot about the pain because it was so worth it, it's not. That's what really hurt me when she said that. I was like, okay. You know, it's just when she said that, I just lost it. And I'm like, that's what it is. That's why it hurts so much this time, I think. I don't know. And I... I'm still, like, spotting here and there. It's not completely gone in more than two weeks. So, I don't know if everybody's different or how it works. Because I've never gone through this. I don't really... I don't know, I don't really know what to expect, but, you know, today is two weeks and it still hurts. I'm still not over it. I have a baby in heaven now. And the biggest question now is like, is this a sign that I shouldn't have any more kids? Like, what does this mean, you know? At the same time, it's like, I am so scared it get pregnant again and go through this and I am also super scared of not getting pregnant anymore because obviously something wasn't right and what if I just never get pregnant again I don't know so it's just so many questions that I have I don't know at this point if I'm done with kids now if this is what I needed I've always wanted four kids and like I said, when I was 22 years old, getting the, getting told that I was probably never going to have kids was the hardest thing ever. And I was able to overcome that, you know. I didn't give up. I didn't lose hope. I just kept trying. I, you know, lost weight, maintained a healthier lifestyle. I was able to control my PCOS. And I had two boys, you know, after I was told that. Even on my first ultrasound with Benjamin, I was eight weeks pregnant and I got an ultrasound. And I'll never forget that doctor. He was like, it's a miracle that you're pregnant. And I'm like, why? You know, which I knew, yes, he's a miracle because I have been trying for three years. But for him to say after he did the ultrasound, I was like, why? And he's like, he's like, because you have a lot of cysts. And normally people with cysts don't get pregnant. And I'm like, oh, like, you have no idea what I've been through to be here right now. Like, you know, it was really a blessing. And second time around with Leo, I thought I was going to take three years to get pregnant. So I never got on birth control or anything. I was breastfeeding. As soon as I stopped, I got pregnant. So it was really easy so I didn't expect this pregnancy to be this way but for anybody going through this right now more than anything it felt really good to talk about it let it out it's it's part of I think moving forward not moving on not forgetting it but just moving forward and another thing is like it wasn't your fault you know I know that was very hard for me at the beginning I just kept thinking should I have not gotten on the airplane? Should I have not gone? I don't know. What caused it? So it's just, you can't blame yourself, you know? There's one in four women go through this and there's no reason why. You know, we don't know why we lost the baby. We don't, we'll never know why we lost the baby. I just know I'll never forget. I'm always gonna remember this baby. And I still haven't told the boys what happened. They still think I'm pregnant. They still ask me about it and I just don't have the heart to tell them. They're not going to understand what it means. They're not going to really know. Maybe they will and I just don't want to do it. I don't know. But they still sometimes look at me and think, oh, I can't wait for the baby to be here. You know, especially Benjamin. He'll hug my stomach and I'm just like, ugh, like I don't know what to tell him. So I just go along with it and I don't say anything. So I'm not ready to tell him yet. I don't know how I'm going to tell him. 
I don't know, you know, maybe just say something like, you know, the baby's in heaven with God now. I don't know, I can't even imagine how I'm going to tell him that, but definitely this has been one of the hardest things I've ever gone through. So unexpected, I didn't expect to go through this, so anybody going through this, I'm sorry. I know how you feel, but it's not your fault, and... You can't blame yourself, you know, it's something really common, one in four women go through this, so, yeah. But thank you guys so much for watching, for being a friend that I needed to just talk to right now and let it out. Um, but this is why I've been MIA, this is why I stopped posting anything on social media and just kind of, you know, isolated myself for a little bit, but feeling a lot better I'll never forget this I'll never you know feel like I've moved on it's always gonna hurt it's always gonna be a part of my life but I think I can move forward now thank you guys